paradise and said I need a caretaker so God made a farmer God said I need somebody willing to get up before dawn milk cows work all day in the fields milk cows again eat supper then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board so God made a farmer I need somebody with arms strong enough to wrestle a calf and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to call hogs, tame cantankerous machinery, come home hungry, have to wait lunch until his wife's done feeding visiting ladies, then tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon and mean it. So God made a farmer. God said I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die and dry his eyes and say maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of hay wire feed sacks and shoe scraps, who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon and then pain in from tractor back, put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God had to have somebody willing to ride the ruts at double speed to get the hay in ahead of the rain clouds and yet stop in midfield and race to help when he sees the first smoke from a neighbor's place so God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadow lark. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners, somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake and disc and plow and plant and tie the fleece and strain the milk and replenish the self-feeder and finish a hard week's work with a five-mile drive to church. Somebody who'd bail a family together with the soft, strong bonds of sharing, who would laugh and then sigh and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says that he wants to spend his life doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. We just watched this video, and actually it was the Super Bowl that we watched this video, and it's absolutely wonderful. And we shamelessly decided to use it with our website and our presentation. So, for those who understand what this video is about, it just talk about how important a farmer is. A farmer is almost the most important person in the country. He's the one that feed us, and he's the one that make us happy. And I love the pumper sticker who says, you know, did you have dinner? Hug a farmer or something like that. It's a very nice thing. Farming is a very important thing. And in Egypt right now, we really should pay attention to that. The two people that's very important in Egypt right now, and I think solving all the hunger problems in Egypt will come from that, is the farmer and the fisherman. This is the two people that can provide food to us. If Egypt doesn't live on anything for the next six to eight months except fish, bread, pasta, rice, that would be good because a lot of people don't even have that. So how we can provide that? Just to put a comparison as far as we understand or found out from our research that almost $100 billion in the United States economy is coming only from farming or agriculture in general. 
So that's a big number and that's something that we need to pay attention to in Egypt because we're just starting and we'll start trying to understand how to make the country go. So this is very important. And the big difference between the government now and the government before, the government before or the house president and his government, he was pretty much begging for everything from all the countries in the world. Destroyed all the agricultural land in Egypt so he can borrow and beg for money from every president, get aid from all countries. So that's the big difference between the government before. The government now is actually trying to do and solve the problem themselves, which is a really good that now we have ownership of what we're doing and we actually try to farm the country and trying to find solutions to the problem that having all the time. It existed for the last 30, 50 years. It just, we didn't care about solving it because the house president and before him we always borrowed and begged for money and aid from all other countries all over the world. So the biggest difference is, or the biggest difference between this government and the one before, we are trying to solve our own problems with our own selves and hopefully with a lot of dignity. So, we understand that there's no money in Egypt and of course the country's now in a complete turmoil and everybody's terrified to put their money in, in Egypt right now. We understand that. So, as a group in Labor Thoughts for you, we decided to come up with some solutions. That doesn't require money, so that's the tricky part. So, number one is lease or outsource all the farming land in Egypt to any company or country that willing to do so. So, XYZ company or country will come and say, okay, I will farm Egypt for you. I will give you 60%, I'll take 40%. They make money and profit, and we feed the people. So this is the first solution that we have that doesn't require Egypt to fork out the money or put money up front. There's going to be another company or a country that's going to do that, and in return, they'll take 40% and give 60% to Egypt. Or whatever is enough to feed the people in Egypt and a little bit more. That would be like a big huge step in Egyptian economy because now the people are eating and they can think. As we say in the US, hungry stomachs have no ears. It's almost the same thing in Egypt. If you're hungry you cannot think, you cannot rationalize, you're hungry. So that's the most important thing we do in Egypt right now is to feed the people. So solution number two all the Arab countries around us, which is I know most of them can help, and I hope they can spare the money, they can put the money in Egypt with a business plan. The Egyptian government put a business plan on the table. This money, this hundred dollars we're going to take from you is only for agriculture. And the first six months, we're going to start on month one. By month six, we have things to harvest, and after the harvest, we're going to do them. By month eight, we're going to do this, and so on and so forth, at least for a year or two. So these countries that are going to put the money, they know exactly what the money is going for and what we're going to do with it. And they can have a lot of people with us as supervisors or help or whatever, foremans, to be with us to kind of watch or oversee everything. Nothing wrong with that. That'll be okay. But again, in six months or so, the people will have food, and instead of everybody's fighting that there's no bread, and the bread is completely taken, the government support out, and now nobody can afford it, we'll take care of this problem. So that will be a wonderful thing. That's another solution that does not require money from the government to put up front. The other thing that we were watching a show on TV, uh, a lady with the name Marwa, and I think it was on TV, the station, was talking about wheat. This is one problem that took so long for like a couple of hours, and in the end, nobody provided a solution. We're still having a problem. So, the laws in Egypt right now, they have to be so friendly to the farmer in Egypt. The farmers in Egypt need to understand and need to know and need to completely say, 
I cannot believe how much help I'm getting from the government to be able to farm or to be able to do whatever they can. And the laws has to be easier and friendly for anybody that's willing to invest or help us with our problem, which is farming right now. The other thing that we said, okay, here's another solution, return on investment. Again, any country, Arab or foreign, you give us the money, we use it for farming, and we give you certain amount of money every year. There is profit, and it's there. And again, this money would be used only for farming. And that's it. And, if the, and we'll give them money. Not like the other things we said. This one actually involved money. We're going to take $100 from you. We're going to use them in farming. Here is the profit that we expect. And that's what you should have every year. Again, Egypt did not fork the money up front. But people will eat, hopefully, from six to eight months. This is the solution that we're thinking of as people looking on the whole issue from the outside. But again, we're not farmers, but we're trying to do the best we can to find a solution to solve the problem. If all the things we just said it didn't work out, we totally understand. And we are sure 100% that there is a million person, whether Egyptian or non-Egyptians, that have solution better than what we just said. If you do, please send it to us. And to the government, Dr. Morsi, if these solutions are not good enough, here's another idea. Get everybody involved in the subject. Farmers, supervisors, prime ministers, everybody that actually involved in the subject. From, from starting the seeds in the ground till the, the minute that, that becomes bread on the table. Put him all in one room, lock him, and say, nobody's leaving until I have a solution. And see what happened. It happened before. Hitler did it with Porsche. They locked him in a room until they came up with the Volkswagen, and they came up with an awesome car. So, people did it before. Other leaders did it before. So, try that. Put him in one room and see what happened. Because the people that are on the street, they need this to be solved yesterday. The people that relaxed and having a good time and enjoying their life, they really don't care about it if it's solved today or tomorrow. They're already on TV, have jobs and have money and they're living very well. Take care of the people because this is the most important asset that Egypt has. All the solutions that we just said, hopefully one of them is good enough to use. Take him and apply him to fishing. We have the Red Sea, the Mediterranean, the Nile, and Nasser Lake. Four huge body of waters, and we still import fish. I still don't understand why. We need a professional fishing fleet. We can do everything we just said with agriculture. We can do the same thing with fishing. We'll outsource the whole thing. A country or a company, they come, fish our domestic waters and they give us a part and they give, I mean a share and they take a share whatever the share may be that's enough for Egypt any one of the solution we said before it will work with fishing so please think about it I hope one of this will work I really do hope one of this will work if it doesn't I hope you have a better solution if it doesn't I hope anybody else will tell us what will work but what we are hoping to hear, and instead of people making fun of each other on TV, and people criticizing everything on TV, that people start saying, this is the problem, and not investigating the problem to tell us that we have a problem. We already know that. No, we need the solution as well. 
Again, we said we're not farmers, nor fishermen, so if anybody say, hey, do you don't know what they're talking about, you know what, you're probably right. But we're trying to solve the problem. So hopefully you can help us with that. That was the problem, or that was the issue, or the challenge for this discussion. And I think this is the solutions that we came up uh, to solve it. So hopefully it will be beneficial. And as we said before, Allahumma ballagut, Allahumma fashad. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>